Hi, welcome back to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is the handover of a Chasson 650 First Line. So to operate your full Omnistat awning, which is fitted as part of the connect pack, using your winding handle, you pop it in at the back, start to wind your awning out. Note that if the wind speeds are higher than 15 mile an hour, don't get the awning out. And what you want to do is wind the awning out until you can reach into the front canopy. Keep winding to about there. And then what you want to do is get your legs down for added support. So, little metal lug here, if you pull that back, it'll pull the front of the foot out of the bracket. And then you want to slide it down, lift this tab up to adjust your telescopic feet. Get the height of the awning right to where you want it and then push this plastic clip back up. You know, it is a bit brittle, but you're not going to break it. it. It is meant to be like that. And do the same for the other side. So again, from the end, lift it back, releases the foot from the front part, slide the legs down, using the tab, adjust your telescopic height, and then lift it up. And then what we advise is that one of you is winds and then you just walk your on and out until you're happy where it is and peg your feet down. And if you are using this air awning or a privacy room, you put your C-rail on here, which is your built-in rail along there to add your enclosure onto the vehicle. And then to put away, fold your legs in, lie your feet, your leg foot plate flat and then you want to just push it in like so do the same with the other one so and then get your winding handle put it back in at the back Wind your canopy in if you if your pole, your winding handle is stuck, push it up and turn it and it'll release the handle without opening the oil. So starting the walk round from the driver's door first. Opening the driver's door, you put your tire pressures here on the sticker so you can see your tire size and your tire pressure in PSI and bar for your tires. This customer's added a few extras, so the extras are being, I'll point them out as we go round the van as they're not standard on the base vehicle. Firma swivel locks, so these just swivel over the doors for added security. And then you've got a key that you can turn and push these in, so you can lock the door and have a added security lock on there. You've got your awning, your awning light and your two fridge vents. Your external barbecue which doesn't come standard on the first line so we can fit these and you get your bullfinch connection which is a red connector there turn it lock it into here on the bayonet fitting you'll need some gas hosing and some jubilee clips to connect it to your caddock awning heater or external barbecue and then that'll run off the main bottle on board to save you carrying the spare in your garage behind the back wheel here is the location of your wastewater drain off. So this is anything that you've put down a plug hole and you'll want to drain this off when you are leaving your site and especially in the winter as you don't want the water to freeze because it can cause frost damage. Pull the handle back and you'll notice in the middle the water's coming out in the center of the tank. Try and get your vehicle over the grid on the site to drop your water off and then leave it open a jar slightly just so that the camera of the road will rock any loose water out there so you'll not harvest any water. Cassette loo, so using this key here, this is a habitation key so this does all the habitation doors, cassette lockers, lockers, garage doors, all on that key there. 
and you want to make sure that your blade is in the closed position if it was in the open position the cassette won't come out so when you know that your blades in the closed position which I'll show you inside you'll be able to lift the orange handle and slide the cassette free of the motorhome you've got a handle on there so you can drag it when it's full so you're not having to carry it when it's heavy and then to empty the cassette take the grey cap off press the button at the back it allows a bit of air in stops the glugging and and go to your waste disposal site which is normally beside your toilet block empty the cassette once you've emptied it there's normally a tap so put some water in put the cap back on give it a rinse out and empty again and then if you're using the chemical so the chemical comes in two forms now so it comes in the liquid form which is either the blue or the green which is 120 mil so you'd fill this cap tip it into here and it's good to go back into the vehicle if you're using the tablet form you put a pint of water in which you can do now or you can push it in completely dry and flush a pint of water in followed by a tablet which is in the cellophane sachet into there it'll break down in the cellophane and it will break down all your solids into the cassette another swivel lock which again is an extra you put your garage doors so to open those you use your key Shut the lock handle, turn it when it's flat, it's locked, when it's pointing up and down to the van, it's open. And you've got your garage in here, so you've got your garage light, which the main control panel has to be on for this to work. You've got some tethering points to tie a load down your bikes, and then you do have a 12 volt point and a 240 volt point and the garage is heated off your Webasto diesel heater we're coming to the back panel so you've got your high level brake light and your rear view camera underneath there and your two reels so the back panel's been strengthened to, to take a Fiamma bike rack here so if you want one fitted this is where your bike rack would be fitted So on the back left hand corner of the vehicle, your boiler's behind there, so I'll show you where your boiler is, but when heating the water on gas, this cover must come off. So if you're heating it on electric or traveling, it can stay on. Obviously you want to put it on before you drive off your site because you don't want in there to get dirty. But then give it a click to put it on and to take it off. Just put your fingers in the middle, thumb at the bottom and peel the cover off. You need to leave that off to allow the gas fumes out when heating the water on gas. If it was to be left on, it would come up with a red icon, which means it's failed. And it's just because the gas isn't escaping. So take the, turn it off, take the gas cover off, and then allow the fumes out for a couple of seconds, and then try and light your boiler back on gas. So you've got another door this side for your garage. Removing this panel here, which is on Velcro, is the location of your boiler. So your boiler's in there, it holds 10 litres of water in your water pump. So it's very important in the winter that you drain your boiler off as you don't want the water to freeze when we get colder weather. So to do so, what you need to do is come down here and behind this false panel here, again on Velcro, you'll notice that little yellow winterized toggle. So what you need to do with that is, when it's down like so, in the position it's in, it's holding water. To drain it off, you've got to lift it up, and you'll notice the water come pooling out underneath the van. That's draining 10 litres of water off, Leave it stood up in that position during the time you've got the vehicle stood up and not in use, especially in the winter, as you wouldn't want the water to freeze in the boiler because it voids your warranty and your boiler is very expensive to replace. Open the fresh in the waste, open all the taps within, within the vehicle. And then when you come to reuse it, obviously put the bung back on the fresh, shut all the taps, shut 
your waist, shut this tap here, your boiler tap, so put it back into this position now. Go in, put the control panel on, put the pump on, pressurize your water on the cold side first, you'll get a cold water feed straight away because it's drawn it from the main tank underneath the van via the pump straight at the tap, go to the hot side, it'll cough, spit, splutter, and all that's doing is it's pressurizing the water and purging the water from the tank into the boiler which is above weight in the garage here until you get a free flow of water from one tap then you can do them all and your system is primed so that's just in there so remember drain it off even if you stand in the van up for the weekend still drain it off because you wouldn't want the water to freeze especially in the winter This locker here is what's known as your Technibox locker. So it's got your fresh water filler in here. So go and get yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. You can get the collapsible ones, you can get the normal ones. As long as it hasn't been used for anything in the garden fertilizer and it's clean, you can fill your fresh water up. So hose pipe into there and fill till it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see the water in the tank, but you can also see the level indicator on board the van. But say you've filled up with a full tank and you're now ready to drive off and you want a little bit less water on board and you want to put some more weight in the garage. Well, having a full tank takes up quite a lot of weight. So there's a little toggle here, which is known as your travel drain. So if you lift that up, Put the pump on and then to open the tap what that'll do is it will allow the hundred percent that's in the tank all the way down to 20 percent so this is your travel drain so it'll remain 20 liters in the tank so that you can stop off use a toilet have a cup of tea but you've got to have the pump on and open the tap inside for this to then start allowing the water to squirt out underneath the van On this side, you've got your trips on mains electric, so your RCD and your main trip tester. If you trip the vehicle out on electric, try here before you try your main site. And then you've got all your 12 volt fuses here, so do carry some spare fuses just in case one um, fuse does blow, you can replenish the fuse. And they are just standard blade fuses, not the micro ones. Main hooker points, so to hook the vehicle up, get your hooker blade. So with all chassons, you get a new chassons, you get a brand new hooker blade. Lift and expose the end, slide it on here. You want to hook the vehicle up first, and then you power source and do it in reverse order when unhooking, or if you're home charging, still do it in reverse order. Push the blue clip in to release the hooker blade on the left hand side. Just when we're here, so underneath this Technibox locker, you need to get underneath the van, and this is where your fresh water drain is. So getting underneath the van. So now underneath the van, beside the back passenger tire, just beside here, this is your fresh water drain. So there's a 15 mil compression fitting on here, which you just get your hands above and pull off. And that will allow all water out of the fresh water tank. But what a lot of people do is they modify these. So go to your plumbing shop, get a 15 mil compression elbow, and you can add a tap on there if you want. So you're not pulling that bung off. But if you're gonna leave it standard, just pull the bung off. Pop it in the cup holder inside the van so that all the water is drained off and you do that in the winter or if you've taken on any source of contaminated water. So now you've got your LPG locker. So this is where you would normally have one six kilogram gas bottle. But this customer has added the gas flow system which is a refillable system. If they were going to Europe, it's far easier to get gas than it is to find a gas bottle, especially a color at the moment. So you've got a filler here, which you'd go to your local LPG center. It's a bayonet fitting, so you'd slide the filler on, turn the front of the filler, which looks like a gun, and pull the trigger back. That's now locked onto the vehicle, so now we can press the button on the display panel on the pump and fill it up until it stops filling. So normally something 
like this will take about 20 pound on an 11 kilogram or slightly over and in here you get a tank instead of a bottle so this is a gas low tank it doesn't come out you just fill it like i've just shown you but to turn your gas on and off you've got a little yellow dial here so turn the minus will turn it on turn the plus will turn it turn the minus will turn it off even and turn the plus will turn it on and then on here you notice that you've got a little gauge of how much gas is in the bottle so we've just put 20 pound in here so it was on red we filled it up so it's now in the green so there's gas on board come to the passenger door and this is where you'll find your fuel filler for the vehicle so capless system with it being four just simply push the diesel nozzle into here and fill with fuel and then underneath because it's a new diesel styled engine it's got add blue so the add blue tank is about 20 litres on a transit um, buy it on the pump is far cheaper than buying it in the drums but you may want to carry a drum with you just in case you're going on a longer trip remove the cap fill it with add blue add blue is basically just cleans your catalytic converter out at a certain temperature start, stops the vehicle becoming sooty and carbon deposits being blown out by the exhaust keeps the emissions down fill it like i've said fill it on the pumps like the wagons because it's cheaper um, add blue at the moment something like 60 70 pence a litre it'll tell you on the dashboard when it needs it it'll give you a mileage countdown fill it up within that mileage because if you don't as soon as it hits zero on the add blue level the engine won't start your leisure battery lives underneath your passenger seat and your engine battery lives underneath your driver's seat with it being a transit now open the bonnet on the ford you need your key pop it in the front Turn it to the, your left hand side first to release the bonnet and then to release the catch, turn it to your right hand side. You've got a steer to keep the bonnet up and then you've got your coolant, oil filler, brake fluid, screen wash, oil dipstick for checking your levels, positive, uh, po positive for giving or receiving a jump start and then your earth on the engine hoist loop there and then you do have your weight plate so it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight three and a half ton train weight the only thing is you can tow with these but at present you can't because you don't have a tone weight you need to go to your chasson dealer and they need to order you a tow bar which is chasson approved from chasson and be fitted by them for you then to get a new weight plate and a tone weight so once you come in the door to the left hand side of it, you've got your control panels. So starting off with your main panel, this is your 12 volt control panel. And you get a little light here to see if you're hooked up or not. If you're hooked up, you will then be able to use the three pin plugs, which gives you 240 volt and you'll be able to run mains household appliances. If not, you will just have to run 12 volt appliances off your leisure battery. So you've got your master switch here, which turns the vehicle on and off, which is this one, the green one. And then the blue one is your lights. They all are then individually switched around the vehicle. And then should you have enough water on board and your boiler's closed, which is in, which your boiler drain is next to your boiler, you'll be able to put your pump on. And then you'll be able to get pressurized water through the taps, toilet and shower. You've got your own light here, which is the end one, which is the light above the door on the outside of the vehicle. And then these labels here correspond with these switches at the bottom. So starting at the top, you've got the middle one here, you've got the picture of the truck, which is the Ford engine battery reading. One of the trailer, which is your leisure battery reading. Take the hook about to give a true reading of your leisure battery and your engine battery as it's charging it. And then you've got your water, level reading so there you can see you've got half a tank of fresh water that'll go red when it indicates that you need to refill your fresh water and then below will go red when your waist is open which you'd have to pull behind the back driver's wheel 
If the panel's too bright or too dim for you, you can press the end button, just press and hold and it'll go through the red, orange and green to dim and brighten the panel. Like so. And then you've got your Wabasto Smart Controller, which is a diesel heater. So you've got to make sure you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more as they're on different levels from your engine intake to your diesel heater intake and you wouldn't want to cause an airlock. So a quarter of a tank of diesel or more for your heater to work. Press the button so it's white, it's on standby. Press it to green and your heater's on and then you'll be able to adjust your temperature to 35 degrees being the max. Once you've got it to the right temperature, if you just press enter, and it'll start heating your vehicle to the temperature set, which is 25 degrees. You can press and go into the menu. And start timers and things. But you've got heating, you've got your timer, and you've got your ventilation. So you've got four levels of ventilation, which is just the assisted fan. So if it is cold, you might want it on level four, just so it blasts the heat around the vehicle, but then you might want to turn it down so it's not using too much fan, too much fan and it's not as loud. In the kitchen area, so you do have an electric hot plate, which is this one here on the left hand side, which will only work when hooked up. So if you're hooked up, don't waste your gas, use the electric hot plate, you've paid your side fees, you'll want to use that as much as possible. And then you do have two gas rings. Allow these to cool down before you put your glass hood down because otherwise if it's too hot it will shatter the glass. And then you do have a The grill and below the grill you have an oven you may want to take the grill pan and oven shelves out when traveling or wrap them up as they can rattle a little large storage here slide out drawer for your cutlery handy light underneath the cabinet for in the kitchen area which you just press the left hand side for it to come on and off storage some storage but in this one you do have your heating controls for your water heater so your water heater controls so you've got two controls this one does the gas this one does the electric so the gas is where the cover needs to come off the outside of the vehicle if the cover doesn't come off then it won't light on gas so you've got two options on the gas one so off in the middle 50 degrees at the top or 70 degrees at the bottom of heating your water on gas you'd use your gas if you're wild camping and then if you're on site you'd use your electric so 230 volt you've got one kilowatt at the top which takes a smaller feed of electric if you are on a smaller CL site or abroad or if you are on a main big camping and caravan and club in the UK you can use two kilowatts and that's at the bottom but the site will let you know on how much current they give you through or amperage they give you through your current hookah bleed on site but if you are in desperate need of water you can have the electric and gas on together which will reduce the time it takes to heat the water so it'll probably take about between five to 10 minutes on both sources whereas on the electric it might take 15 to 20 minutes to operate your fridge so you've got a freezer compartment which is separate to your fridge it's all through the center here so you press and hold to turn the fridge on and off fridge and freezer and then e so press this button to switch between your energy sources. A stands for automatic energy selection. So what that'll do is it, it'll know what best source to run on which is available. So at the moment we're hooked up, it's gone to hook up. If I was to take the hook about, it would go to gas as there's a gas bottle on and automatically switch over. If I was then to start the engine, it would go to the 12 volt setting 
which is from the engine alternator. It's not off your leisure battery. It's a feed when the engine's running, it'll send a feed to the fridge and it'll keep the fridge at the temperature it was previously set at. So if you are pre-chilling, a couple of days before, you'd um, hook the vehicle up to charge the leisure battery, put the fridge on, allow that to come down to temperature. The night before you'd go off in the car or the day before, put your shopping in and allow that to chill overnight. If you're leaving it on automatic, then you just unhook it, start your engine and drive off and when you get your site, your shopping should be nice and fresh. If you go while camping, as soon as you turn the engine off on automatic, it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas. That's before. That's because if you want to pull in for diesel, it's the last thing you want is this sparking when there's fumes, because um, it could ignite petrol. So what you've got to do is manually turn it over, so press the button, so you've got a manual hookup, manual battery, code 6, and it's gone to red because it's failed because the engine's not running, or you can go to gas. Temperature here, so 5 bars being the coldest, if you are pre-chilling, you want it on 5, when you put your shopping in, just turn it down to 3 or 4, because from personal experience, it can freeze your shopping in your freezer. And then you've got your frame heater here. So this just stops the doors from sticking um, when the, the fridge is on full temperature. And then one last thing with your fridge, when you're not using it, say for a couple of weeks or even um, putting it away for the winter, you want to take everything out, you want to wipe it down with some antibacterial wipes, some Dettol sprays, clean your fridge out and then the last thing you want to do is close the door because it forms an airtight seal. So on both catches, You've got these little toggles. Put the toggles into the frame hinge, and what that'll do is it'll stop mold and bacteria growing in the fridge because it'll allow air circulation in and out of the fridge and freezer. Above the fridge, you've got a slide out TV bracket, which is a Project 2000 bracket, so they don't come fitted with an aerial. You will need to fit one by your dealer, um, which normally goes in this cupboard here next to it. You've got a TV point, which is a 12 volt. A 240 volt and a TV aerial connection. Best tellies are the 12 volt ones, and then just press the button, slide this out, and you can fit your telly onto here. But always make sure that it's clicked in before you start traveling. In the back of the 650, you've got your washroom, which is a very spacious washroom. So you've got your concertina bathroom door which is tied back for when traveling on velcro so untie that and you've got a bathroom door your light switch which is the most common question we get asked where it is it's just underneath the wash basin then you can see there that your water system is working and it's getting the temperature Got a storage drawer, storage for your toilet paper at the back of the toilet, and a large toiletry cabinet that you can slide the mirror across to block the window if you have that open. But you do have a fly screen which clip together, pinch in the middle to depart the two, pinch from side to side, and you've got a blackout blind on all windows throughout the motorhome. Press the buttons to release the catches and this is the same on all windows. Push it out, the window will stay out on the stairs. Push it all the way out to bring it in to release the stay. Now to operate the toilet. So to operate the toilet you need to ensure that the pump's on and press the blue button at the back which is your fresh water flush from your fresh water tank. So it's just a fresh water flush. Flush the toilet first which helps lubricate the seal between the toilet and the cassette. And then you need to use this grey lever here, so slide it away from you to the right. Use the toilet, obviously flush the toilet after use, and then close the blade back to the left. Doing it in this order means that when you come to empty the cassette, you'll be able to lift the cassette straight out if you were to have the blade open the cassette won't be able to come out because the mechanism is still engaged and if you are wanting to use any pink liquid because there isn't a header tank on the older style caravans and motorhomes it's drawn from the freshwater tank 
you can dilute some pink liquid in a spray bottle, spray the bowl, flush and it'll do the same job, it'll give you that nice smell and it'll keep the bowl nice and clean. You've got access to your garage area, so if it's raining you don't have to go outside, you can just get whatever you need from out the back. Behind the mirrors is a large wardrobe space, you've got hanging rail, these bungees to keep the items stored away on the two shelves. And then on the other side you've got your shower cubicle. So we've got a large shower cubicle here. So when winterizing as well, we'll always recommend that you unscrew your shower head from your shower hose and lie that down in the tray so no water can freeze in here and leave the mixer taps open. And then above you do have a fly, a fly screen on the skylight. And a blackout blind. Put it open, unlock it first, so we we'll always recommend locking it before travel, unlock the skylight and then you'll be able to open it after you've had a shower or you're just wanting some ventilation in the washroom. But always make sure it's shut before travelling, you can't travel with these open, they are just plastic, they'll cause a lot of damage. And next to it you do have a a hanging reel for wet towels but it's also great if you've been caught in the rain walking the dog or with wet clothing you can hose it off with a shower head hang it up in here shut the door put the heating on the heating duct just across there this will get lovely and warm and dry your clothes out in no time just underneath the worktop by the sink is two switches one for your drop down bed and one for your electric table so your tables electrically operated so if you press the table one the table will will go down press and hold the switch don't just keep clicking press and hold and the table will come down so you can have it in the coffee table position or the dining position it's up to you but if you're wanting to use this as a four berth you bring it down push it right the way over and then pull the extension out to house the other side of the table push that down and then you want to push it as far forward as you can behind the driver and passenger seats and then there's infill cushions in the garage which we're just going to get for you now I'm going to show you where they go so <laughs> so this is how the cushions go so large cushion without the leg hard base down soft base up to sleep on this cushion with the leg here and then your l-shaped one the short end pointing in and the long end pointing to the door and then to fold your legs push them and slide them up so if you lift them off you'll be able to just slide the leg out and fold it down and place back into the garage and use the other switch press and hold and you'll be able to bring your bed down. So if you were using it as a four berth you would just stop it at any height required and make the bed underneath or keep pressing and you'll be able to bring it all the way down to its lowest position that it's in now which is about waist height. Put individually switched reading lights there, put your duvet on, you can leave your duvet on Take your pillows off before you put it up and in the winter you always want to bring the bed away from the ceiling so that the mattress doesn't get damp and swell and cause any damage to the ceiling along with removing your cushions from the backrests of the, of the van. Your ladder would clip onto here if you were using it as a four berth. So fitted on both sides you've got your smart lounge so to assemble this seat remove the cushions off the seat first and you'll notice you've got a full size seat back underneath. Using the dial on the front slide the seat back 
and you'll notice you've got Isofix so you're putting grandkids kids in here your car seat can fit straight to the frame that's bought through the chassis get your bigger base cushion and put it on the bottom and then the backrest lifting the seat belt through it you've got a full size traveling seat and you've got exactly the same on the other side so you can have them up when traveling assemble them or disassemble them when you get to your site and put all your cushions back and you've got your spacious lounge so now in the cab which is based on a mark 8 ford transit you have your handbrake down to the right of you which is a folding handbrake to allow the seat to spin so always pull it up first pull it up slightly higher push the button in and release and your handbrake's off and then you can hear it click back up to put it back on electric driver and passenger windows on the doors box the cab unlock and lock on here adjustment for the mirrors which are just the top ones only the bottom one being the blind spot is manual so you have to just push that in and adjust it to suit your headlight controls so you've got them off you can put your side lights on or you can put your headlights on and then you can push the middle button to adjust the beam of the headlight so whether it's too low or too high rear fog lights and then when the headlights are on if the dials are too bright or too dull you can adjust them here wipers indicators these controls here go through the screen in the middle so you can go up and down see your speed and digital how many seat belts are fastened how many miles you've done on trip computer 2 trip computer 2 timer average fuel usage on trip computer 2 average speed on trip computer 2 distance to empty which is your range the instant fuel usage when you're running you'll be able to see that and your speedo you can go down to driver assist and turn your hill start on and off but it's on automatically and you've got trip computer one there so you can view that as well and then you can go down to maintenance oil life and view your oil life and your add blue range and your add blue level so you can see how much add blue you've got in your tank Please note that these are servicing every year, so we do recommend a oil and filter change every year, every first year with it being new van and every second year a major service to keep it in line with Chasson and Ford's warranty. And then this side you do have your cruise control and your speed limiter. So you press it, push it up to set, cancel without touching the brake and press cancel to turn off your cruise control and reset and then limiter you go down and go up and down and it'll go say limb at the top and then if you keep clicking it'll go up in one miles per hour increments and, and when you feather the throttle it'll not go over that until you kick down push it hard to the floor and it will override it as safety features and at the bottom you do have volume mute voice command and steering wheel controls on the first line it is a manual gearbox with six speed Lift to go into reverse and you've got a rear view camera that comes on on your head unit which I'll get onto in a second. You've got your mode so you've got normal or eco here. So you can put it into eco if you want to save some fuel or just leave it in normal and it's quite good on fuel anyway. If you're on wet grass and you're struggling to get off you can turn your traction control off so you can give it a bit of guts and get it off with the accelerator without the ESP kicking in. Fan speed this side, turn on and off, or if it's off you can just adjust the fan, it'll turn it straight back on, so you've got on and off, heated mirrors, for the screen, face, feet, for where you want the air to go to, whether you recirculate in there or whether you put the air con on, and then you've got your temperature this side to adjust the temperature. As it's got start stop, it'll go off when the engine is 
or should I say the engine will go off when the battery is to a good enough charge so that will just kick in and out when it needs to so don't be alarmed if it's not working it just means that the battery needs a good charge to give it a good run out um, but you can turn it off here if you don't want it often it will come up on the screen in the middle of the dials auto stop start disactivated by switch 12 volt point there for charging and USB for the head unit and your hazard lights and then coming on to the Xcent head unit so you've got an SD card in the side which is your map card which will bring on if you go to home the first one you get to is your navigation so you can see where we are now on Fellside Road at Time Valley Motorhomes press the bottom right hand corner and you can plan a new route you can plan a press address and you want to press in the middle bar your town or your postcode so you want to input where you want to go put in there it'll say go to town so if we press there there's some cities saved so we'll say Edinburgh go to Edinburgh so go to town it'll show you an overview go select its destination and it'll calculate the route so start calculating the route And then it'll tell you an overview so it's 110 miles it's going to take us 207 247 minutes it's going to take you on the fastest route give you an overview you select this destination and then it'll start to calculate the route again just like so going back to home you've got your radio which is just a fm am tuner but you do have dab so that's on the next one and you can save your favorite FM stations go to DAB you can go to list and you've got all your stations and then you can go to preset and set your favorite DAB stations Bluetooth you can cl click on Bluetooth and you want to start to pair your device so you want to go on your phone and look for accent when this is looking for you as well and it'll come up here Callum's iPhone whoever's iPhone press pair or device pair and then it'll ask if you want to sync your contacts on your device just press allow and it'll download there and then if you want to use it for music you would press the music icon which is just here when your phone's connected failing that you've got USB so you can connect to your device through here which will bring up USB and iPod and then you've got camera so you can have the camera on all the time when driving forward but you do have shortcuts along the bottom and then finally you've got your settings so this is a f280 unit so you can download updates for free from xn's website download them onto a memory stick pop the ignition on and pop the memory stick into the front here go to other and install software you might need to do that if it ever becomes glitchy or unresponsive and update is what it needs and then you've got your curtains on your cab to bring it round on an evening to black out the cab.